Man, this is good. This is good. My lighting is good. Much better. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty darn good. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to As Told by GG 101. So, it is Tuesday, which means I would be giving you a recap, review, or whatever of Pretty Little Liars, but it's still on hiatus, which means we are continuing with Fuller House. So, in the description down below, I will list every video that I've ever made in regards of Fuller House. Because today's episode, episode numero tres, okay? I have to say it wasn't bad. So, episode number three is called Funner House. And it revolves around Stephanie and Kimmy getting DJ to go out and have adult fun. And that is the term that they coined on the show. And they go out to have a club. They, they go out to have a club? No. They go out to a club. And they're having adult fun. But Kimmy runs into her soon-to-be ex-husband. And all this stuff happens. And Joey's at home babysitting the kids. So... Basically, when they were at the club, they ran into a number of people. They ran into Kimmy's ex-husband, Fernando. They ran into Macy Gray, who was, like, hosting the club that night. She was, like, the celebrity guest host or whatever. And those two really hot brothers from Dancing with the Stars, Val and I forgot his name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were on there. Because Jody Sweeten, who plays Stephanie, is on Dancing with the Stars. So, that connection is, yeah, girl. So, that part of the show was centered around, you know, them going out and having fun and, and DJ really letting loose and, and letting go of, you know, the mom act and probably the guilt that she feels as a mom. And Kimmy... Dealing with her ex-husband. Well, soon to be ex-husband. So they meet at the club and he was there with another date. But like he was flirting with Kimmy the whole entire time and like trying to woo her or whatever. While his date was in the bathroom. And then she comes out the bathroom and they are... The club decides to have a dance-off. So Kimmy and DJ have the bright idea to do <laughs> time of our lives from Dirty Dancing. Which, if you've never seen Dirty Dancing, get your life. Like, you need to go watch it. It's one of the best movies from the 80s. And that was like, it was just, it was a really, it was really, really fun. Now, while they're going through all this and whatever, the kids are being babysat by Joey. And he takes away their technology and shows them how to have fun with, like, super soakers and silly string. And really, truly, like, 80s, 90s, kid-friendly fun. So... I have to say, I actually enjoyed this episode. Not that I enjoyed it, but I was able to watch it and not be like, Ugh, why? Why do I have to please my subscribers? I was pleasantly surprised that I wasn't annoyed. There you go. Um, I really like kind of like the comparison, especially when Joey um, is babysitting them. Like I like the comparison of when you think about it, like when Joey would babysit them on Full House, what he would do with them versus when he went to go babysit them in Fuller House, it just really does show you, like, how times have changed. And that was very interesting for me to see because I was like, you know, back when Full House was on and, you know, at that time, which is the 80s and 90s, when you were being babysat, the closest thing to, like, high-tech technology that was out was, like, what, Nintendo? Atari? I'm not even sure, maybe Sega, but like, you know, that was like the most techie that you got. Then there was like the beepers, but like only adults use the beepers. You know what I'm saying? Cell phones were not as rampant and they were not as high advanced. They were not smartphones. And I use the word smartphone very loosely because sometimes these phones be acting like, bruh, bruh. okay. So I really like seeing like that difference. And I have to say, this episode was finally the episode that was separating the shows apart. Like, I think what was annoying me so much about Fuller House was that it was harping way too much on Full House and bringing back that nostalgia. And it wasn't standing on its own, in my opinion. And this was the first episode where I felt like it was now a stand on its own kind of a show. 
You know what I mean? And that is what made me... That's what made me not mind watching this episode. And it's not, and it's making me not mind watching the next episode because if it's going to continue being its own kind of show, then it's, it's definitely something I can tolerate. You know what I mean? Like, yes, it's beyond corny. And the one thing that I did notice is that when they're doing... Um, comical jokes it's almost like the timing is off like they'll lead up to the joke and then like run right into the ending like too quickly I felt like that happened a couple of times with some of the jokes but it's still it's still that full house corny um, which I think they should try and find a, a different way to make it corny so it's not it is not as seemingly as corny but I didn't mind this episode, like, at all, and and I don't know. I'm not going to say that's my favorite show, because I'd be lying to you. Definitely other shows I'd rather watch, like, like Bob's Burgers. But, but the third episode wasn't half bad. It really wasn't. Um, Stephanie was always my favorite character on Full House, so it's it's very interesting that like what 25 years later, with them being older, and her character being so different than when she was a kid, I still love Stephanie. DJ's character, however, I don't know. I feel like with DJ's character, I, I can't really describe. Oh, I just realized my Olaf doll was in the shot. Okay, you you want to hear my review? Okay, I can stay on a top Olaf. But yeah, I just feel like her character is a little overdone. I can't really explain what I mean by that. Her character is a little corny. Like I feel like DJ on Full House, she was always level-headed, and she. Even though she had her moments of being unsure of herself, she was always a confident kind of a character. Like, definitely the kind of older sister you would want. And in Fuller House, she's more apprehensive and more, like, eh, unsure and more like Steve Urkely. Not Steve Urkely, but more like Tina from Bob's Burgers. Like, she has a lot of... moments if that makes sense you know what I mean <sighs> I know what I mean oh sorry Olaf I'm getting you out of frame you want some man you're a snowman it's ice cream you both thrive in winter mm -hmm. you kind of melt in summer just singing Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that is my review for episode three for our house. I'm not minding. Look, I don't want to say I'm looking forward to the next episode, but I'm not minding watching the next episode and reviewing it for you guys. So, for those of you who said that the show did get better, I didn't believe you. You might be right. I just think it's a little ridiculous that I took up to episode three for it to finally start to feel like it's standing on its own. The show is still incredibly corny, but I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't even feel like I'm watching a show. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching like a parody. But yeah. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and share because sharing is caring. Oh, you want to subscribe and you know you want to be part of our Murpod. Mm-hmm. You know you want to swim with the Murpod. We got coffee, ice cream, and chocolate and almond. Join the Murpod. It's the right side. Again, that weird part. I always end up there. Loves and likes ya. Bye!